Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this episode of Gig Talk. Season two, episode two. Today we have a special guest with us. We have Mr. GBM here to be our special guest for today. So um, before hey, hey. we get started, hope everybody I hope everybody's having a great day. <laughs> Before we get started, how about you introduce yourself and tell us a little, about, a little bit about your channel and how long you've been digging, how long you've been on YouTube, stuff like that. Well, um, I started my YouTube channel. Well, by the way, I go by UDM, but my real name is Brian. Um, I started my YouTube channel November 2017, but I started uploading regularly starting on january 15th of 2018 and um during that period of time um i want to say between november to december actually no i take that back from march to about november i was searching for content on how to maximize my earnings with just uber eats i did not know of doordash i did not know of grubhub or even, well, I did sign up for Postmates, but I didn't give them much of my time. But, um, and when I decided to go ahead online and try to find new content or how to maximize my earnings, I could not find any up-to-date content on Uber Eats. And everything was, like, outdated. They were, like, a year old, um, two years old, and the app didn't even look the way mine looked currently at the time. You know, it was an older version of the app that they had, they did videos on. And um, a lot of those videos that I watched came from like, um, what's his name? The the guy on the on the skateboard. I forgot his name. Oh my gosh. Elijah? <laughs> I've been doing it so long, I guess. Elijah? Okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't think his name is Elijah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think his name is Elijah, but I've watched some of the Ryan Shear guy. Um, this guy, he travels a lot. You know, the, the black guy. Oh, I know. Who board, doing yeah. movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and now he travels. He He's done with the gig. So um, when I watched the content, I was like, whoa, okay, since this content is outdated and I'm doing it currently, maybe I can be a go-to and for like an updated version of Uber Eats. And then I started putting up videos and giving my take on how to maximize my earnings with Uber. But even back then, I didn't have the experience I have now. And um, just to fast forward a bit, I, I, learned, I learned as much as I could from the Uber platform. Then I gave it a break and moved on to Grubhub. I gave Uber a break for about a year. I moved on to Grubhub. I drove a lot of miles. I racked on about um, over 100,000 miles in about a year. Um, I did a lot of runs for Grubhub. I moved on to the uh, the catering side of Grubhub, which is called Grubhub for Work. Mm -hmm. um, I worked downtown Miami, the hectic areas. I did the catering orders alone and then did some other stuff. Then finally, I signed up for DoorDash. I moved on. Uh, I learned as much as I could from DoorDash. And now, fast forward even more, and now this is where I am. I, uh, to speak on my YouTube channel, I started that, like I said, I uploaded um, con consistently starting January 15th, 2018. And I took a few breaks here and there. I used to um, do 16 videos a week. Um, a lot of people ask me, how did I do that? It was it was a lot, and I balanced work and YouTube all at the same time, um, and it, it was just a hustle, you know. <laughs> it was just a hustle, and now I'm I, I have my podcast. I turned my channel in more into like a, a podcast channel where drivers like you and T, um, Dimples and T, have the opportunity to call in and share, you know how they feel about the specific topic of the night, you know? And um, now I'm on your show. <laughs> oh. 
Well, thank you for being here with us. So let's get into, should we just acknowledge, um, thank you guys for coming and if you can hit the like button for us, let us know that we should continue to do this. We have a few comments so far from Hopeless Romantic. Which one would you catch alive? Miss WW, Monique Milner. She's very excited to see you. She said, hey, the DM is in the house. Um, Amy's here, I told Bakiva. Sorry, sorry, is here. Bye, gig. <laughs> um, Amari is excited to see you, UDM. And Christine Johnson is here. Christine said, What's up, UDM? <laughs> you can subscribe this year, too. Okay, so let's get into the question Are we thinking like hourly employees when we are independent contractors? So that's going to be tonight's discussion. Um, honestly, it is not an easy topic to address. And we've been struggling with it for like two weeks now. And our outtake or outlook on the whole thing is different. So, so I read an article by Miranda Leigh Harris. And in this article, she discussed whether or not we should think as our, we should think in terms of hourly wages. So she focuses on um, work in terms of small chunks of time rather than, oh, I make this much per hour. So personally, from my standpoint, I don't think like an hourly employee. Um, I just don't view things that way. I go out, as we all know, I have a full-time job. I know you guys are tired of hearing that, but we all go out in this gig world and I I just don't look at it as how much do I make per hour? That's a, a question that I get all the time. Like, well, you put in this many hours, how, many, how much per hour did you make? And I don't look at it that way. I just, if I wanna make $200, I'll make the 200. If it takes me longer than it normally does, then so be it, but I know that I, made what I wanted to make for the day. So I just wanna read a little snippet of the article. Um, Miranda said, a system structured on hourly wages and pay periods can trap people into unproductive and short-sighted financial practices and mindsets. In economic decisions are often limited to immediate and urgent needs on a week-by-week -week basis. It's easy to lose sight of long-term financial goals or worse, fail to make long-term financial plans in general. So um, I don't know. I, I just want your input, both of you, as to how you view this whole gig world and the four hour basis. And then we could go from there. So who wants to go first? Our special guest should go first. I think he's frozen. <laughs> well, I guess that means I go first. Oh, there he is. Okay. Um, all right. So um, now I was, I was muted my mic and unmuted my mic and whatnot. But um, okay. So um, why why do we think like hourly employees? I think it, the main reason and mainly because we came from a, a W-2, uh, unless we had our own business previously. Um, that's the only way we could we, we could dive right into any additional type of work, thinking like a business owner. But people, majority of the, the people that start these gig jobs, they're either looking for a new source of income or, a per, or they're looking for an additional source of income um, on top of what they currently have. Like you said, you have a, a full-time job, the um, dimples. So it's like, it's this, this is an additional source of income for a lot of people. And people that have a full-time job would only look at majority of people, I should say, and the people that I've speak, spoken to, they would look at it as this is just a job. And one thing I've learned over time 
is a lot of a lot of what we do now is to try to help people understand the the being classified as an independent contractor does not mean that you're going to be fired but a lot of people within the community use the word fired and that is not that is not what it's supposed to be but i understand why they use the word fired instead of deactivated or terminating the contract um with the company just the same way they can terminate contract with you without reason for any at any moment. majority of the people that sign up for the jobs are looking for additional income not necessarily to replace the full-time income and when they come into this type of work they already have the w-2 mentality and they see it as a new job um and seeing it as a new job, they, if they were to get deactivated, they would then say that they don't want to be fired, which fired is not the proper, in my opinion, fired is not the proper word to use. Um, it's just more about, uh, more about terminating the contract with the company, you know, or the company terminating the contract with you. But this is something I learned over time because I had the same mentality coming in when I started Uber Eats, I did not want to lose that additional income and I didn't want to get fired. Right. And it's just, that's just basically what it is. In a nutshell, majority of people start this thinking it's a new job. We don't have to do an interview, but we still have to do a background check unless you're working shift. Shift is like the only one, I think, to my knowledge that you have to go and do some form of video interview for you to be able to move on to the next step. But Uber Ease, Grubhub, even Instacart, there's no interview process. So a lot of people think, hey, you know, this is a new job and it's easy to get. Right. But the term independent contractor, like everybody loves the freedom that comes with being an independent co contractor, a sole proprietor working for yourself, being your own boss, controlling the hours, but yet we're still saying, oh, I make, I don't know, $20 an hour, $25 an hour. But I think if you were a true entrepreneur, the hours that you put in cannot match. Like the business owners are putting in 80 hours a week. You know what I mean? And they, they don't think in terms of per hour, they just want the business to be successful. So I just, I guess so much pushback all the time when people are like, well, you spent, like the other day someone commented on my video and they were like, you spent 11 hours working Uber Eats and you made this much and I was able to make this much in a short amount of time, which we all know that time tracker on, on not Uber Eats, on Instacart, the time tracker is not accurate. So they're like, well, I can make more on ship is what the person said. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but you have no control over that. Like this literally goes, as the wind blows, that's how we get these orders or these batches. You know what I mean? We truly do not have control over our earning potential. It's what's available, what's sent to us, what we're able to grab, what, how the customer tips, like so many factors go into it. I don't know, T, help me out. Maybe I'm just like going off on a tangent. I think people, force us in a sense to think on an hourly basis because like you're stating when I first started I wasn't thinking hourly but I got questions all the time well how long did it take you how many hours did you did you put in and I'm just like I don't know because I never paid attention to it all I knew is that there was money on the app and I was outside and I was just telling you like it would be nighttime and I didn't even realize it. Like, of course it's dark outside, but it's just like, I didn't realize I would be outside from sunlight to sundown. I just saw money. Money is what kept me outside. I didn't use the bathroom. I barely ate. Eventually my body would say, okay, you gotta do something. You gotta eat and use the bathroom. It's only gonna take, you know, 15 minutes of your time. But I never looked at it as hourly, I just knew like, okay, I just shopped for 10 items and got $30. What's next? Oh, it's another one to go grab two items and $25. Okay, what's after that? 
I'm constantly looking at orders and delivery windows, but I'm not looking at how long did it take me to get $270? It took people asking me, even my own friends, well, how long did it take? How long did it take? And I'm just like, I don't know. I'm making money. That's right. why I need to know. Right. So I like to relate this to this. I always like to, and I've said this before, you have a family member that's ill and this family member needed to have a life or death surgery. It costs X amount of dollars. Would you take the time to be like, oh, well, I can't work if I'm not making $25 an hour. Would you waste your time on that side of things? Or would you say, I don't care as long as I can make the money to save my family member's life. That's how I view it. Because mm. some people, this, some people like are in life or death situations. They're about to lose their their homes. They're gonna get evicted. They can't feed their kids. The lights are gonna get cut off. Their cars are gonna get repossessed. They don't care how long it takes to make that money to quote unquote survive. And that's how I want people to look at it. Cause y'all worried about me and how long it took for me to make the money that I'm making. Forget about me. What do you have to do to save your family or to pay your bills, keep the lights on, have food on the table? You wouldn't care at that point about the hourly rate. Rate Now, again, like I don't want to make it seem like how much you get paid per hour is not important because it is important. You should not make 10. OK, you should not make a specific amount of money per hour and completely waste your time. If you find yourself on Postmates making like eight dollars an hour, is it worth it? Absolutely. No, it's not worth it. But I think we get so con consumed with this per hour mindset <laughs> in my opinion it's just it's beyond that like forget about that and i don't know i don't know well okay may i, may I interject yes okay. okay well i think okay like earlier when i mentioned about drivers going not coming from a business and jumping into this the majority of drivers come from a w2 and jump into this and see it as a W-2. And this is, uh, to me, this is a language that they understand. Like at their W-2, they might be making $12 an hour. And then doing this, they see that they're making about $23 an hour um, before gas and taxes and everything is, is taken out. But it's like, this is just a language that they understand because the majority of them come from that W-2. So when they, ask questions like this and i understood that this is just how they this is how they they understand what i'm doing and whether it was worth it in the video that i did you know so it's like when they ask how many how many hours did you work how many miles did you drive you know it, all those things i realized that the community they are interested in that stuff to see how much profit that i took home and in the end as a business owner, you would want to take home some kind of profit. So when you are thinking in the business sense, it's like, it's not just about how, it's not just about making the money that I got to make for the day. It's more about this slide is bright in my face. You, you see how lit up I got? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like turning on my bright lights on this person. But anyway, all right. So when, but thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. when a person, like I said, it's just a language that they understand. And as a business owner, when we consider this to be a business, um, yes, T and Dimples, we all put in a lot of hours to learn our craft, right? It's, it's, it's just the same thing as, as YouTube, figuring out how to create a video, figuring out how to edit a video, figuring out all the things that many people that watch don't understand the the endless hours we put into creating right it then is like when they watch a video and then like, oh this video sucks man do you know it took me like three days to make this <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I'm so it's like you we put in a lot of hours to learn our craft and then when we become good at it then it turns into something to boost our ego and I'm speaking for myself. It, to boost my ego um, on how good I am and whether it's still profitable for me in my market with what I do. Like if 
I'm if I'm saying, okay, I want to make two hundred dollars, and it's taking me sixteen hours in a day to make two hundred dollars, I okay, this is not working for me. You right. know, and and that's how I look at it. Is like because sixteen hours a day to make two hundred dollars. This this I'm losing it's like time on the other side. Say that again. It's like you're hustling backwards. Right. So I count the hours mainly because I feel it's necessary to work within a certain window of time because I do have a family. I do have a channel. I do have a lot of things to juggle. So I pay attention to the amount of hours that I have to work. But before, before I had all of this stuff to juggle, I wasn't counting the hours. I was just going out there to make my money. And a lot of people came to the comment section um, when I was just doing Uber Eats and telling me how how long of a day it was, how much more they made than me. Um, and I didn't understand why they were doing that, but it gave me an, a better understanding as to why they look at it that way. Because if you are going to replace your full-time job, which I did, but if you're going to replace your full-time job to make money, you should have at least the same kind of life that you were living or the lifestyle you was living um, when you did have that full-time job. So if I'm working, if I say, yeah, I'm a business owner and, I'm, and now I'm working like 14 hour days, 87 hours a week, I have to me, I, I don't have time for anything else. So I put in a lot of the hours that I needed to, to learn my craft. And now I just look at it as, you know, something to make me feel like, yeah, I made some good money today and I'm home to spend, uh, spend time with my kids. And, you know, I, and plus it gives me a better understand this, this last thing. And then I'll let you guys, you know, continue the conversation. But, you know, if I know on the weekend, all I have to work is eight hours because I know my potential earnings for eight hours, I'm good to go. You know, it's that's just my take on it. Right. T, you have anything? No. So I just want to read another snippet from the article. Um, she says, it's, okay, hold on. She says, it's taken her a long time to pull herself out of the trappings of an hourly wage mindset. Rather, we should be applying a project a project-based approach to our own professional life. Not every position that she has worked has, so she, basically the hours that you put in don't always equate to what you earn in the gig right. world, right? Just some weeks are better than others, a holiday, rainy weather, whatever. So you can put in short amount of up time, get paid more than you would if you put in a standard workday um, schedule and make less. So she's basically, she wants us to change, well, not she just wants us, but I'm just saying, her standpoint is to, to pull yourself out of that because like, how can you, it's we're trading the time for the money. And yes, we should think that way, but just like you said, you learned your craft, you got better at it. Now it's, you say you didn't quit, quit your full-time job, right? I did. Hmm. Okay. So that's why I think, and I always say this, like I am in the gig world, but I don't, I don't consider myself a true gig worker. And I don't want to step on anyone's toes with the things that I say, because at any point I could say, all right, I'm done with this and I'm moving on. But I know for others, this is this is all that it takes, you know, to to live your life and provide for yourself and your family. So you stepping out of what gave you that push to even say, I'm I'm done with my full time. I'm gonna do this instead. Okay. Well, my position was okay, put it this way. My wife was pregnant with my first son. And I was only making $700 every two weeks at my full-time job, which was considered to be um, a good job to have because of the benefits. And 
That's before I had a child. And $700 every two weeks without having someone to take care of is okay. I was I was managing, I'm good, you know, without having someone to take care of. And then when my son came into the picture, my older son, his insurance bill, when I put him on my insurance, it was $400 a month. And then it jumped to $700 a month. So imagine me working at a full-time job, my position, I had to deal with 650 students. That's the workload that my boss, which is the principal, put on me. Even if I was supposed to be only, I was, I was hired for the cluster of three classrooms, which was behavioral classrooms. But then, because of my contract, which stated at the time that the principal, at their discretion, can ask me to do something, whatever it is, and I have to do it and completely just forget what my job description says. So they then used me as the behavioral person for the three classrooms, the behavioral person for the whole school, um, the, uh, the campus monitor. I was, I was pretty much doing so many things for $700 every two weeks, $1,400 a month. And then my son was born and then all I had left to feed him, to pay my bills, was seven hundred dollars. So I said, I can't live like this. This is too much. It's too much stress. Mm -hmm. So I decided to learn Uber Eats. And when I saw that I made four hundred dollars in twenty-four hours, is it was three days, but the amount of time I worked was twenty-four hours. Employment mindset, right? That's how I was right. looking at it. 24 hours, I made $400. I was like, whoa, $400 in 24 hours? That's a day. I'm I'm going to start learning this more and more and more, and then I'm going to get better at it. And when I left the school job, I was making almost $200 a day. Then my market got oversaturated, less orders. And then I started making $90 a day, which is the reason why I left Uber to go ahead on to Grubhub. So, you know, I just, I had to leave that W-2 mainly because of the workload. It was doing something to me up here. The stress of being a new father, right? I'm not getting much sleep and then I have to go to the school and I got to do all of this stuff that these people want me to do. I got kids with behavior issues. They're spitting on me. They're hitting me. And I got to keep my composure when I didn't get any rest the night before. And, you know, it's 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 a lot, you know, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. You know, I did try to go back to school to get into other fields, but it was causing me to miss time with my son. I didn't get a chance to see him take his first step. I didn't get a chance to see a lot of things that most parents, first time parents would want to see, you know, their child do their first word. I heard it through video. I watched it. So it's like I missed all of these things. And to me, I made a decision and I has sat my family down. I said, you know what? Listen, you may not agree with my decision, but I see an opportunity here. And I don't know how it's going to affect you or our relationship, but I see a vision and I'm going to go at it and I'm going to do it. And I'm, that's it. If you don't, if you don't support it, I'm just saying, you know, now that I don't care. <laughs> you know, it was a tough, it was a tough decision to make, especially knowing that I'm a new father. And it's like, but it gave me that freedom. I attacked it. I worked those 14 hour days. I worked on 18 hour days to learn this and get better at it and better and better and better. And now I'm at a point where nine hours a day is too long for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I have a better control of what I do. And you know, that's that's a little bit more of my story in case you didn't know, <laughs> but it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah no problem. And so team, I had to leave that W2 because it, it was doing a lot to my mind. Uh, my right. stress level was always high and I had to, the freedom is I really needed the freedom. 
So T, um, when we were talking earlier, you can you share what you mentioned with um, coming from your full-time job in comparison with, to what you were making on shipped? What were you trying to accomplish with a side gig? In a sense, I was trying to, what did I say? Uh, you're talking about right before we went live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How come I can't remember? I remember what I said. Um, oh, God. Maybe you wanted to make more. Yeah. My job. I wanted, I definitely wanted to make more. Um, even though I didn't have a problem with the income at my job, I, how you were just speaking about how your job was like mentally exhausting. I'm kind of the same way. If I'm working a job, be it part-time, full-time, I don't care. Once it starts to get mentally exhausting and draining, I need a break or I need to quit. One or the two has to happen. And so I decided to take a break. And so now it's at a point where it's like, I need to make more than what I was making because I just do. I just feel that way. Because if not, I may as well just go back to work. So now that I'm on a break, I'm like, I need to make X amount of dollars because if I don't, let me just go clock back in because otherwise it's pointless now. But I didn't used to think like that because it was so much money out here. I didn't have, I didn't have a need to think like that. I just knew I was making a lot of money, but now that things are slower, I have a lot more time to really calculate things and say, oh, well, that was just 13 an hour. And yeah, that's more than minimum wage here, but it's still just like, no, that's not enough for me. So, yeah. So do you think we need, to, or both of you, do you think that we are shortchanging ourselves by only saying, I want to make $30 an hour, $25 an hour, and we're not really looking at the long-term, bigger picture financial goals of this whole gig world? Mm. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know. Why are you asking these hard questions tonight? They're Did not hard. <laughs> we have to have a serious show sometimes. I know people are like, what is this tonight? But I think it's it's a topic that's getting us thinking. Because I remember I'm viewing this from a different light. And now I'm talking to you two and you guys view it a whole nother way than I do. So I need to learn too. I'm trying to see, well, why do you so think that way? You're, you're asking, are we shortchanging ourselves by thinking the way that we think? <sighs> um, well, can I, can I answer? Okay. I, from my perspective, I don't feel like I'm shortchanging myself. The reason why is because my way of thinking either increases or decreases my hustle. Mm. Now, if I know, if I know that I have a goal, not a daily goal, but a monthly goal, like say, uh, if I want to take my kids on a vacation, right, and um, I want to save up this amount of money so I could just splurge, get whatever you want. Daddy, it's on daddy. Get ice cream. You want ice cream? We're going to go ahead, go to bed. Everybody tell me it's going to be hurting tonight. If I want to give them that type of experience, I know I need to make a certain amount of money. Now, for me to get my hustle on, right, to meet that goal, I need to make a certain amount by the end of the night. And mm -hmm. when I start doing that, I start saying, okay, I need to make 25 30 an hour. Now, if I'm doing that, if I see I start at six, the order that comes in, I'm now turning on multiple apps. I'm not just running one. I'm looking at the money coming in and I'm rushing. I'm going, I'm driving, I'm getting, I'm getting the orders done as many as I can before it hits seven o'clock, <laughs> you know? And then if I hit my goal, if I'm like, say, if I did not make 25, but I make 19, then I'm going to be even more picky or I'm going to increase my hustle even more so I could, by the end of the night, not necessarily just work per hour, but by the end of the night, I got to hit that goal. So just knowing 
that if I have an end goal, not for the day, but to answer your question, if I have an end goal that's coming up, right, it increases my hustle to knock these orders out as quickly as possible or to be more relaxed. And right. Just to, you know, save the money I'm saving. There's no real end goal. There's no vacation. It's just saving and working, saving and working, you know. It is, if that's what it is, I'm, I'm good with, you know, sometimes 18 an hour, you know, and, and so on and so forth. But the additional the additional money per hour is because, okay, I got something I got I got to save for. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, so that's I, I don't feel like I'm shortchanging myself when I start getting into that because, it, like I said, it increases my hustle or it decreases my hustle. And it, that's that's my motivation. Right. So I had said to T, I said, well, what if you were making $200,000 a year? Would you think about the hours you were putting in per day or would you break it down to a per hour outlook? If I was making $200,000 a year annually, would I, I would, depends on what my lifestyle is like. There was a story of a, a security guard a security guard, all he did was monitor the parking lot of a specific building. Uh, I think it was a federal building or whatever. And he was working that job, excuse me, for so many years, he saved up half a million dollars. And it's like no one or hearing that, oh, man, he saved up half a million dollars, but it took him so long to save up half a million dollars. Is it, is it, is it enough for him? Maybe his lifestyle, yeah, cool, right? But if I'm working and I'm making 200 k a year, depending on what my lifestyle is like, will determine how I view the money that I make. If that makes, it's just trying to under, uh, answer your question yeah. in, in the best way. So if I live in some loft downtown or something, somewhere, and I'm making 200 k a year, yeah, I'm, I'm living the life, right? I'm, uh, I can take care of my bills, you know? I'm good. But how much of that can I really use to do the things I really want to do? Even with kids now, 200K a year. <laughs> right. I got a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and a 16-year-old. 200K <laughs> a year won't, won't do me no good. <laughs> right. You know? right. it, it's okay, but it's not enough. So that's just my answer. It's enough for me. Give me 200K right now. I just need it one time. <laughs> I'm gonna flip that money five thousand ways. I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I goodness. mean, you know, I, it's it, it is a decent amount of money, you know. Um, but I guess it's mainly it's, it's mainly because of my focus. It's, I'm I've been I've been watching a lot of motivational videos and how to get to the locate the the destination you're trying to get to, creating multiple streams of income. You know, it's it's, it's a, like that Steve Harvey mentality. You know, that, that's the person that I've been watching and listening to because a lot of the stuff he talks about, I, I, I can relate to, you know? So it's like, that's every morning it's, I'm watching some kind of Steve Harvey stuff, my motivation. So <laughs> 200, I want more than 200K. Me too. So wow. I just want to highlight a few comments. There are a lot of comments, but of course we're not, I don't want to keep you too long, if, especially if you have other things to do. But I just want to highlight a few comments. We are going to read them, but just not right now. And this one is from Richard. He said, I totally agree with you, Dimples, and the Medium article. I cringe when people talk about their hourly wage. I have a holistic approach to earnings. Then Jazz, driving with Jazz, says, hey, you guys. I would say it depends on circumstance. When one is doing this as a side hustle, it doesn't matter as much. When you do this full time, you're extremely contingent on your time. Oh, I cognizant agree. of your time. Sorry, cognizant of your time. I agree. I agree yeah. with that. That that goes back to what I was saying when I was actually working my less than part time job and I was doing this on the side. 
I wasn't paying no attention. I just knew I was getting money. And yeah. then now that I'm not at my Wait, hold job, on, hold on. Why your head had to shake like this? Get <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was getting money. <laughs> okay, go ahead. But it's like now that I'm not at work at my primary job, it's like, all right, what's going on? Like, how much am I making per hour? You know what I'm saying? Because if not, let me just call them and be like, I'm coming back to work. <laughs> So I love her comment. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Psychic says, I agree, Dimples. Look at where you want to be, then figure out how to get there. You might need some hourly goals to get there, but that is not the end goal. Mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's hard. It's, ooh, it's so hard to say. Because I know when I said it... <sighs> I just feel like it's a catch 22, this whole hourly thing when it comes to gig work, because like I said, I never had that mentality. And then it got to a point where it was like, okay, the orders are not so great with shipped. So I was telling y'all in my videos, I need at least $20 to leave the house. But when orders became more scarce, it was like, all right, I'll settle for $18 to leave the house. Now it was just like, I keep lowering my standard just to make it worth it now. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's a catch-22 to me right now. Yeah. It's a rough spot. Psygic says, does anyone ask Warren Buffett how many hours he worked or how many miles he drove? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know, but I, I would think someone, all the interviews that they've done on him, <laughs> like, <laughs> He lived such a normal life. Warren Buffett was a person that I, I paid attention to as well. And I watched a lot of videos. I was trying to get into investing and all that. And um, he lives such a normal life. He drives a normal car. He don't act like a, well, like a billionaire. Like how people expect a person with money to act, you know? Mm -hmm. He doesn't act like that. You know, he's just an investor and he loves what he do, you know? So, um, I mean, I get it. You know, I, I, this is the this is a nation of workers. You know, we we all had a W two before these apps existed. You know, um, we were either like innovators or working for the company as an innovator. <laughs> you know, like say right. Apple, right? You know, coming up with brilliant ideas that you probably could have used for yourself and and created something uh, uh, marvelous or it's just something great. It's just this is a, a, a nation of workers and this it's, it's it's a mentality is okay there's more people that just want to make money versus running a business hmm. and there's more people that in order for their business to flourish they have to be in the business they can't leave or hire the right people to put to run the business for them while they make money while they focus on other things. So it's like there's not many people that run that know how to run a business, and many people don't care about running a business either. So I I would see that's why you know a lot of people they are stuck in the employee mindset or the way that the employee thinks of the hourly wage. You right. know, it's because not many people care about running a business. I on right. my channel I talk about, you know, don't don't um accept offers like three dollars going ten miles, you know. It, from a business standpoint, you're losing money. But a person that doesn't care for business, oh man, I just want to keep making money. Just uh, right. hey, I ain't got nothing else to do. I'll take the three dollars going ten miles. I'm like, why would you do that? But okay, how right, do you think? <laughs> you know. But I wouldn't do that. But hey, do you think, you know, it's just some people just want to make the money and that's it. Mm. I want to highlight this comment here. You can read it, T. Adrian Ball Bell. Bell. Oh, where are my glasses? Adrian Bell says, at the end of the day, if you need to make $1,000 for rent, you can make it in a week. I was not making that much at my job. There is always a ceiling with a W-2. Wow. That yep. is a good comment. Yes. I, that is I don't want cheese on that one, but yeah. 
It was a good <laughs> comment. Trust me. Yeah. Don't it don't you? I mean, you can make it at your job. It's just gonna take you probably a month or two. But uh, I get what she's saying. Yeah, Unless you worked for the MTA and was making five hundred thousand dollars, like some of the employees over here. But that is a good comment. Mm. Um, uh, working for ourselves won't always have the same numbers yesterday or last week, right? For me, I am trying to get out of the nine to five mentally. I can't think like that anymore. It's no longer serving me. Mm. Wow. Yep. Interesting. Yes. So I, I don't want to continue this serious topic, but I thought this was a good one. I don't yeah. know. And yeah. thank you, UDM. Someone is, what is CPL, CP4L? What does that mean? <laughs> Cherry picker for life. Um, oh, what is that? Yeah, I keep seeing that comment. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, so. It's, 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 it's just, um, again, you know, I know everyone has their way of thinking, their way of approaching the gig economy. Um, and, you know, there's even some people like, okay, Speaking for myself, I, when I first started, I was all about food delivery and food delivery only. But then, I, like you said, T, you saw the, the decrease in the pay decrease, decrease, and you started to ask yourself, hey, you know, like, what is this still worth it? Right. And then I asked myself back when I did Uber Eats, I'm working 14 hours. I used to make almost 200. Is it still worth it if I'm only making $90 a day? And I'm taking time away from seeing my son grow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of going back to W2, I expanded. I went over to Grubhub. I was making more money, but I was still working the same amount of hours. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it was like, I need to figure out how to shorten my time out here and became a cherry picker. <laughs> yeah. So I started to cherry pick and select the orders that I want. Only the orders that I want and reject the order I did not want. And when I saw, excuse me, when I saw the opportunities that were being sent to my phone after I rejected an offer that was just given to me, let's say $3 for 10 miles, I would do that on Grubhub back in the day. You know, I would just drive it. I would take it. I wasn't thinking like a business person, you know, and I, that's how I racked up that many miles on my car in a year. But mm -hmm. When I learned after I rejected the three dollars, next next offer that they offer me is twenty four dollars. Go five miles. What? Just why did we all just have this in the first place? Exactly. You know, instead of this three dollars going ten miles, and then I realized, okay. And then I had conversations with the driver specialist, like majority of the driver specialists that I had. I was able to contact them and have real conversations with them versus just the emails. And the dispatchers at the time on Grubhub, I was able to talk to them because of the Grubhub for work, um, catering orders only. They would contact me, hey, can you do this for us really quick? We'll give you an extra, or we'll do this for you, whatever, whatever. So I was talking to them and they were telling me certain things that I learned in the, that was going on in the back office. And I'm like, so you're telling me I don't have to? I don't, I don't have to? And when I realized that, I was like, okay, this was my opportunity to make the money I need to make. Reject until they send me something that's worth my time. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's and when I realized food delivery began to get a little bit more strict with their rules, I expanded outside of food delivery because it it wasn't just about is it still worth it doing food delivery, or is it still worth it to be a gig worker? If I'm going to be a gig worker, I need to have 20 other backups, <laughs> you know? So I signed up for everything. I found the apps that people never heard of. I, I started signing up and learning how to work those apps, and I call it surviving the gig economy. That's, that's it. If you want to survive the gig economy, you got to know how to not just hustle and learn how to work that app in your area, but you got to be able to expand outside 
style of what you're comfortable with. Some people just work Instacart. Some people just work DoorDash. But if something goes wrong with any of those apps, I ask them this question all the time. Do you have something that can easily replace that? I know that's your bread and butter. But if you want to survive and make this your full time or make this a great source of income, do you have something that if one dies off today, you have something else that you'd be like, ah, whatever, I'll, I'll, that, that one was on its way out anyway. Let me just go ahead to this other one and continue to make that money that you was once making. If you mm-hmm. can't do that, then you got some work to do if you want to make this a full-time gig or you want to make this, um, if you want to survive the gig economy. Because they're always changing their rules. They're always changing their bank. They're always changing. And you got to right. be able to adapt to it. And there's nothing so, that we could do about it when they make those changes. Nothing at all. We could bicker. We could talk to each other about it. Man, teammate, you saw that awful. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Man, Dimple, I can't believe they said that to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's you it. Know, and that's, that's it. We can't do yeah. nothing else about it. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here to survive, especially since I, I do this full time. I'm, I'm here to survive. I'm not trying to go back to W two because when I when I had my vision, and I spoke to my my mother, I spoke to my family, I spoke to everybody, and I sat them down and told them this is what I'm gonna do. I didn't have six thousand subscribers, you know. I didn't have the podcast. I didn't have the things that I have now. The opportunities I have now. The people that's reaching out through email or whatever. I didn't have all of that back then. So it's like, I have a vision that's bigger than the economy. And that's what I'm going towards. And that has nothing to do with really, sur- uh, not surviving, but that has nothing to do really with um, working hourly. You know, <laughs> it's about, that's my end goal. Right. Getting to that point in my life where I'm like, now I feel like I've done everything I can to get to where I needed to get to. And majority of the reason why I do what I do is because of my kids. Five years went by, and now I'm at this point. What's going to happen when they become teenagers? My boys. Mm. I want to be at another point when they get there. Do I want to be driving and running my car all the time like I am right now? Mm-hmm. No. But right now I'm in hustle mode <laughs> to get to that end point that I'm trying to get to because of my kids. You know, and that's that's where I'm at. I think that's an important takeaway is that your your vision, your dream is bigger than the gig economy. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than the hourly yeah. rate wage. And I think we all should have a goal, <laughs> a vision in mind, because before you know it, you said five years went by so quickly, that could turn to 15 years yep. and you still do the same thing. So shout out to you. All right. Thank you. Yes. So I don't have any more questions for you. What about you, T? Um, Molly, so did you, as far as your plan, you don't have to say it here, but is that something that you broadcast on YouTube or that's just something between you and your family? Um, You said my plan? Yeah. As far as your goals that you have in mind, like you said, you sat your family down and said, look, this is my plan X, Y, and Z. Like, is that something that you put out on YouTube or that's just strictly between you and your family? Well, I didn't even give my family my plan. And I just told them I wanted to do this full time. You know, um, and uh, still, I'm not even sharing it here. You know, I just see, I have this goal that I know that um it's like you know when you start many times throughout my life i've i've told people like my ideas starting new business ideas and you know all kind of ideas and it's like it always got shot down you know so this one i decided to hold on to give like just little little details here and there hey 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 this is that this is that you know but not allowing anyone to get me off this this course that I'm on and just keeping this within me. And yeah. um, Mrs. UDM, she would tell me like, she when I first sat her down, she did not know 
what this would be like. Because she has a full-time job, but she also knew the stress that I was dealing with at the school. And she understood that I wanted out. And she also understood that I tried to get a, a I, would, I tried to go back to school to get another degree, right? Uh, to get a degree in um, not stenography, but sonography, like ultrasound and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, she she gives on my case all the time, but she was like, "You have a, a 4.0. Why don't you finish that?" I just never finished. I got bored with it, you know. That's, she's like you're so intelligent. Why don't you? But I'm like, eh, I don't want to, you yep. know. So I um, I try to become a police officer, going from the school to the um. Uh, for a lot of the police department and it's like i passed everything but these are the things that i don't tell people and i'm saying it for the first time here i did apply to get other jobs outside of the school that i was working at but it's like i just wanted to do what i love yeah and the only thing that i could get at the time and the freedom is what i had loved at the time not necessarily the money yep. but freedom and that's why I came up with do what you love and love what you do. No matter how how many people look down upon, like, hey, you a delivery guy? Oh, my gosh. You know, like, listen, I don't care what you say. I'm making my money. You don't need to be counting my money. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I got to do. I don't care how you feel about me. You're not going to be my friend no more? This is, you yep. know, like, I, I got nothing else. Hey, you want to go? Go by. But I, I know that. I've been down a rough road. I've had a rough patch in my life. And it's now my goal to motivate as many as I can to not just rely on the gig economy, but to, if you see an opportunity while using the gig economy to make the money that you need to make to pay off whatever bill, to uh, start whatever business, use it to your advantage. Don't let them use you, you know, like use it to your advantage. Don't be like me. I have a lot of stories that I can tell about the bad choices that I made. And I'm just out here now just trying to teach drivers to not make those same bad decisions that I made, you know. And um, one driver told me that they, I, I still have my same car that I started with, but they've been, they had three cars. Because they were pretty much taking everything. They're on their third car. <laughs> like, oh my. You know, but I guess I'm kind of rambling here a little bit, but I just no, that wanted was to. Good. That was good. That I, was good. I just wanted to just let people know that, you know, one thing I've always said is there's money out here. Whether you start your own business, whether you go to school to, you know, um, become whatever that you're looking into. Uh, uh, the, uh, a popular field is becoming a nurse. If that's what you want to do, hey, more power to you. You know, I salute. If you enjoy your job and this is just a side thing for you, hey, you know, if you're retired and this is just some extra income, hey, you know, everyone has their thing. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anyone's hustle or their, their reason their reason for doing what we do. But I know my reason for doing what I do and I haven't reached my destination yet. So I'm gonna be around for, for a while, Dimples, and T, <laughs> and I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna keep on going, cause I ain't there yet. But eventually all of the driving around and all that is gonna slow down. Cause yeah. I don't plan on doing this for, for all my life. Mm -hmm. Nope. You know? Well, I'm yep. excited to, uh, once you reach that next level, I'm excited to know what it is. Um, you know, if you choose to put it out there, I'm excited. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Well, just understand that I, I don't, there's no real end. It's just um, to consider it to be a ladder. The first ladder was getting monetized on youtube <laughs> you know like i needed i needed some additional income from somewhere right the second ladder is to create community and i did right the third ladder is to you know i don't know just i don't know 
I don't want you to share it. You know, I don't want you to share it. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. I, whenever you are ready to release it. I'm just curious. So she I said, keep her up to date when you get there. <laughs> yeah, like no pressure, no pressure to share anything. I'm just excited to know, but whenever you're ready to release it, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I will have a story to tell. Um, just like I told y'all my story about everything else, I will have a story to tell about my journey to to the, lo the destination I'm trying to get to. So yeah. if you're around T, you will hear that story eventually. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you so much. So, Dembo, before you leave, before we, we really exit, you've been asking all the questions, Dimples. All right. <laughs> so let me ask you a question, all right? If that's okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. And I decide if I want to answer it, though, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. Why did you start working, I believe, it's Instacart? My first gig app was Grubhub. Oh, it was for a public. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why why did you begin? Like if you don't mind sharing. So I wanted to get out of debt and like I had of course I had a job, but it it just wasn't adding up because I was living beyond my means. So I had student loan debt, credit card debt, I had just leased the car, and I was literally living paycheck to paycheck. And I was just like, yo, I cannot do this. Like I don't know how much longer I can continue or I could continue. And I had a full-time job, but I also had a part-time job, two part-time jobs actually. So I would work Monday through Friday at my full-time job. And then I had a, two retail jobs and I would work Friday and Saturday in the morning at one job, it was in a mall, and then cross over to the other side of the mall and work, I'm sorry, Saturday and Sunday at the other job. So I was working seven days a week. <laughs> People would comment like at the part-time job, they're like, oh, well, you got another job, so you have money. And I'm like, where's the money? Because I, I didn't know where it was. So they were viewing me from a, a standpoint that I didn't even view myself. So I was like, all right, something has to change. Like, I can't continue in this cycle of making it and spending it, putting stuff on credit. Like, I was just really making bad financial decisions. So I started listening to Dave Ramsey, and he said, the best place to go if you want to get out of debt is to go to work. But remember, I was already working. I was already working and I was still in debt. So he said, well, you can deliver pizzas and make, was it $1,500 a month or something he said? And I was like, I could deliver pizzas. Like I was so excited. I could deliver pizzas. And I applied to work at Pizza Hut and they did not, they said no. So I was just like, God, how could I not get the job? So then in Brooklyn, Grub, this was 2015, Grubhub was new on the scene, like nothing like this was ever out. And they had a, it was something on Craigslist. And I was just like, I'm going to give it a shot. So Grubhub was my very first gig. And working that first week, I want to tell you I made like $400. But it didn't, it didn't take any effort. It didn't take any mind power. Like it was so easy. So then I stepped right. back, I was like, yo, if I can do that, like all of a sudden, just like you said, I had this vision. I'm like, oh, I can get so much done. I can accomplish so much with this side income. Never have I ever wanted to quit my full-time job. And still to this day, I don't want to quit my full-time job, but the freedom that the gig work has provided for me is just, it's amazing. So I found myself saying, well, if Grow Up is out there, what else is out there? And that's when I got into DoorDash, Instacart, Shipped. I do them all because the market fluctuates so much. At any time, they could change their pay scale. It just, so I never wanted to be stuck in one arena. So I just hustled at that point. I hustled. I was in school at the time. And instead of taking out additional student loans, I was paying the tuition. You know, you were excited when you go into birth song, you'd be like, here's my tuition. So I don't know, it's just a different feeling. And then I just kept hustling until I got out of debt. I got out of debt. And all of the things that I was able to accomplish, like 
I got my degree, I got my master's degree, but the best feeling is not the work that I actually put in to get that degree, it's knowing that I graduated with no debt. And my coworkers have $90,000, $100,000. And here I am like, look at this. So the, the gig economy has allowed me to do so much. Not that it would not have been possible with my full-time income, but it just came so much quicker and almost with ease, and I'm not saying all the time because there are some rough days, mm -hmm. but I, I just, I don't give myself enough credit, but I do understand the where I am in life and I'm grateful for it. Like to be out of debt, I bought a house this year. I bought a new car, paid it off. Like, you know, like these things are just, the I can only thank the gig economy. I can, so that's why I started. All right. Well, I have one more question for you. Okay. All right. All right. You have a certain level of appreciation for the existence of the gig economy. If it wasn't yes. for the gig economy, you wouldn't have been able to accomplish the goals that you did, right? You were able to graduate without that, right? A lot of your colleagues or a lot of the students you went to school with, they are in debt and you were out of debt, right? So, um, I'm not asking you to leave your job or anything like that. I would just want to know if there's this love or this appreciation for the gig economy, um, would you even or ever consider doing it full time? Because no. with this whole pandemic, no. this whole pandemic, a lot of people lost their jobs. Mm -mm. Right? No. What, you you would get another job? Yes. I would never do this full time. And that's nothing against anyone. I commend you guys for hitting that pave stone, the cement day after day and hustling. I personally would not quit my job to do this. And I, I understand. Um, I read a book. I don't know, if, have you, any of you heard of Robert Kiyosaki? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rich Dad Poor Dad? Not Rich Dad Poor Dad, what the form of the Cash Flow Quadrants. Okay. Cash Flow Quadrants, have you heard of it? Mm-hmm, I haven't. Did you read it? I didn't read it, no. But I hear Dave Ramsey speak okay. about it. All right, so the Cash Flow Quadrants, to just summarize it, um, it basically stated, like you see at one point you said you had two part-time jobs and your full-time job, right? Mm -hmm. And at one point, before kids, before anything, I had four jobs and I was never home. And I was asking myself, I have all this money, but I have no time to spend it. <laughs> I have no time to go enjoy it at all, right? So I read the cash flow questions when I was just doing full-time Uber Eats and... um the basically is basically a square with four squares inside of it, four quadrants, right? And one has an E for an employee, an S for self employed, a B for business owner, and an I for investor. And the way that he broke it down was the employee, if they want more money, they get more jobs. The self employed for them to be successful and get more money, they have to be employed at their own job. The business owner finds people and puts them in place, hires those people to make them the money. The investor uses his own or her own money to make them more money. So, you know, there's different levels and you just gotta choose which one you wanna be at. Now, if you wanna be an employee, just know that you will always have to keep a job to keep money coming in. But if you right. want to be self-employed, you're going to always have to be there for you to make, to have an honest or decent living. If you want to be a business owner, you're going to have to leave the self-employed employee mentality so you can understand how to hire the right people. And then when you make enough money as a business owner, you can have enough money to invest and let that money make money for you. But it's up to you if you want to be an employee and transition to self-employed or self-employed mm -hmm. transition to business 
owner than business owner transition to investor. Whichever one is is, is on you. But right. you have to understand it how each quadrant flows. If you want to be an employee, you're gonna always have to keep a job to keep money coming in. No matter right. what the economy turns into. Yeah. So I'm not saying that I want to be an employee for the rest of my life, but in regards to ditching my employee status to come over to this arena of gig world completely, I am not comfortable doing that. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have another goal or another, another dream to succeed or obtain um, money elsewhere. But as far as I'm going to stop doing this to do the gig stuff, I personally, just me, I don't have confidence in myself to to just let go of my full-time job. I don't. Am I going to be an employee forever? No. Like I'm already working on I'm already working on things that are going to change in 2021 for my life. But that that takes time. But I just I don't know. I I can't think of abandoning my full-time work for for this. And I totally understand. Trust me, I dealt with it, right? But um, my tipping point, and then I'll just let y'all go because we're like an hour and 16 minutes in, right? <laughs> my tipping point was when I watched Steve Harvey again, he had a video and he called, he called it Jump, right? I don't know if you've heard him talk about heard it. it. Mm -hmm. Right. And the thing that he said that, that resonated with me and I held on to is you have to jump in order to be successful, but you will hurt yourself. Don't think that you won't get hurt. It's hmm. all about whether you're willing to deal with the fact that you know that you're going to get hurt, but eventually, you will become successful if you just jump and stick to it. Take that leap of faith. But there's an, on the other side, there's a guarantee. If you do not jump and remain safe, you will never know what it feels like to soar and be in the position you would like to be in. Right. Just stay, just stay safe. Yeah, you're cool. That, that, safe, you know. But you will never know what it feels like to get to that point you want to get to because of holding on to the things you don't want to risk. <laughs> I, I took that leap of faith. I took that leap of faith. That's why I sat my family down. And now I'm in this position. I'm not saying I'm where I want to be, but it was tough. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to act like I've been making $200 a day. I didn't even know that existed in my market. <laughs> you know, I used to make 90 <laughs> you know? But, you know, it's I, I learned it. And I got better and better. And the, I, I brought up the cash flow quadrants because, like I said, I had four jobs, and I didn't have a life. I can't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have kids with without a life, you know. So I decided to leave the E and go to the S. And now I'm at the S, trying to go to the B. You, you understand what I mean? So from E to S and S to B, I don't know if I'll ever go from B to I. I, maybe, maybe it's in my future, but right now I'm at S trying to get to B because I got to hustle in my work to make the money I need to make for me to be able to do what I got to do, take care of what I need to take care of. So that's all the rambling I need to do. So you have the floor. <laughs> you Thank say. you. <laughs> Thank you. I linked your channel in the, the description. Um, before you go, do you want to give people a snippet of what's to come? Or do you want to leave any social media handles where they can contact you if they need to reach you? You can. Well, um, I do I do every gig economy app that's popular. I There are some other ones that are not in my market. But as soon as it comes to my market, I sign up for everything. Corn shop, I'm still waiting on corner shop. I haven't done any Instacart orders because, hey, even if there's money there, but we, we've had a lot of problems with bots in my market. So it was difficult to even get Instacart going. But um, I'm, I'm here to 
help as many people that do this full time, part time. Um, my goal is to help them find the answers, not necessarily to change their lives. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that's not my that's that's not why I'm here. I'm just my my purpose is to have real conversations, just like this one about the mentality of when you get into this, or you know, to help you understand the things that you can do and the things you could, that could come out of just using these apps to your advantage. I feel everyone, whether they have a W-2 or not, should have some kind of gig economy app in their back pocket, signed up and ready to go. Background check cleared, everything ready to go because we just don't know what it's going to be like in the next couple of years when it comes down to W-2 work because I'm pretty sure you two have heard of Albertsons, um, I think it's Albertsons that let go all their staff to just have DoorDash deliver all their all their stuff. So it's like, I think it's Albertsons. Somebody mentioned that in my video. Somebody said something about Albertsons under one of my videos, but I didn't know what they were talking about. But yeah, I heard something. Well, there's some some stores. There's some companies, some businesses that's letting their staff go and the staff don't know what to do where to go or how to how to get it done you know and i really do feel like the staff even if they don't even if they choose not to work it at the time just sign up sign up for one of them you don't have to do it but mm -hmm. that's your backup you can just turn it on and see what it's like the day of a lot of people got laid off because of this whole thing and they had to figure it out and that was all unexpected and i'm just about surviving and i don't i want everybody to be able to survive out here because it's tough it's getting tough tougher and tougher as the days go by yeah so that, that's all I, that's what that's what i'm here to do thank you <laughs> all right. thank you so much for coming on thank you for the invite and we'll speak soon all right, everybody have a blessed night. T, uh, Dimples, y'all that's leaving. I got to go back to drive. I got to <laughs> get more money. All right, so All right. <laughs> thanks for the invite again, and I will see y'all when I see y'all. All right. Bye. Bye.